everybody is wondering what's going to happen next just as we got excited about chat gpt and uh, how it is fueling uh, inference and compute and uh, it's uh, dealing with large amounts of data was by scaling the models you threw in this article and it says scaling intelligence is not as intuitive as it we think it's counterintuitive and we have a lot of issues with the environmental uh, sustainability groups about how ai and compute is uh, costly to the environment so you're saying the models are not are designed efficiently and they need to be rethought so tell us uh, two things one is how do you forecast the ai landscape technology landscape evolving second thing what are the opportunity pockets you see uh, for startup founders to build startups so first of all look you know i'm an investor i am not at this point an entrepreneur and so you're an investor scientist uh, write, i don't know about the scientist part that's very, like of, that's very kind of that's very kind of you uh, i'm an investor marketeer at some level uh, so the forecasts really come from you know conversations with some of the exceptional founders and researchers in our ecosystem so you, i'm synthesizing you talk to researchers we talk to lots of researchers we talk to lots of researchers look i i i we talk to professors at Stanford, Carnegie Mellon, MIT, uh, Harvard, Cornell Tech, yeah. Columbia, all the time. Because, you know, they are at the cutting edge of the technology. They are. We talk to researchers at Microsoft. We talk to researchers at NVIDIA. We talk to some of the entrepreneurs that are kicking the tires on the models. So our, our knowledge is a synthesis of what we are seeing. And, and obviously, we make judgment calls. You know, yeah. when you synthesize, inherent in that synthesis is judgment. Yeah. Uh but let me take a step back. When I yeah. to answer your question, you know, the way I think about this is we are still early in the AI era. Okay. Uh the last couple of years have been about LLMs and LLMs have scaled dramatically. So much investment yeah. going in. It. So much there's been a lot of investment and a lot of success. Yes. You know, when you look at what ChatGPT or Claude can do today versus what similar products could do 3 years ago, yeah. it's night and day. Yeah. at the same time it's not clear that the future is a linear extension of the past mm -hmm. these models will not scale in the same way mm -hmm. and and there are multiple reasons for that whether it's cost of compute or access to data or others and so we will see new model architectures mm -hmm. uh, i have a company ikigai mm -hmm. uh, that's a spin out of from mit mm -hmm. which is a very different model architecture itself so it's the graph based architecture versus the transformer based architecture and specifically for structured data yeah it is able to it's much more computationally efficient yeah. than an llm so you can train it yeah with a fraction of the cost you can fine tune it with a fraction of the cost yeah and it's an opinionated architecture that works for structured data yeah uh so that's one example mm -hmm. uh but there are many many other examples of new model architectures that are emerging yeah like the world world view model like world view model and others and so what you'll see in the future is one you'll see a plethora of models uh, and model architectures two you know you will see applications that are compound ai systems mm -hmm. and again this is the term that the blair lab in berkeley really popularized this is mate's lab where they said look value is shifting from just model development or innovating in the model to innovating how you stitch these models together Mm. because you combine models with re reasoning with data pipelines to build what are called compound systems and you know the buzzword these days is agentic systems agentic system, systems correct correct and these compound ai systems you know will allow you to do things that an individual model could never do mm. so we're, we're we're seeing a lot of innovation there uh i think we're seeing large organizations who have proprietary data sets yeah bring their proprietary data sets to bear in the form of fine tuning or custom model training. Mm -hmm. Uh so those are some examples but I think you know that's just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. Uh I think there are many more transition uh you know opportunities ahead. In terms of the opportunity for startups, you know we are at a unique time in the history of technology. Mhm. Mm I think every incumbent in every single industry yeah is at risk. Yeah. You know I would not want to be a company with a billion dollars in software revenue sitting around right now be complacent i think all of those companies are at risk yeah. but it's not just software companies i think all companies uh are oh, at risk so, so think about they are not ai first they are at yes, risk but by definition most companies are not, not ai, AI first. first and so all of those companies are going to have to 
figure out how do I still use the advantages that I have, yeah. but make the transition into an AI native world over the next five, seven years. So can you say that um, AI first tr transformation, like digital transformation used to be, is going to be an industry in itself? Transforming incumbents into AI first? I think it already is. It's if you look at McKinsey, is. BCG, Accenture, you know, the consulting firms are the, at the bleeding edge of all of this. Yeah. I remember in, in the mid 90s, McKinsey made a lot of money helping people think about the internet. Yeah. Uh, in the last two, three years, all of the consulting firms have made a lot of money helping people think about the AI revolution. But that's messy, isn't it? <laughs> Making money is always messy. messy.